Welcome back to another review by Mega Train Lover. Today we are doing a rather special locomotive, uh, as you may have, you may have guessed from the title, but it is the Hornby Flying Scotsman. As you can, as you can see, um, I got this in a train pack, which basically was split from the train set already, um, so it comes with. Uh, came with free coaches which I still have but I just decided to review the locomotive itself because um, um, this is how you would normally you, because most people would normally get it with just the locomotive um, and um, I really don't have to go into too much detail about the Flying Scotsman but it's an A3 class engine um, it was built in 1923 and it was one of the first locomotives to be preserved in 1963 and by Alan Pegland she toured America and Australia and she's currently undergoing a very extensive overhaul and hopefully she'll be steaming again sometime in the near future you know fingers crossed I really hope we'll be we'll get to see her steaming again um, and she's obviously the world's most famous steam locomotive um, and she was the first British locomotive to officially reach 100 miles an hour. City of Truro did reach 104 but that wasn't officially recorded but Flying Scotsman's run of 100 miles an hour was officially recorded. Um, but anyway Let's get onto the detail of this gorgeous model. Now just look at that. Now the tender, the tender's just here, but we'll get onto that in a second. Oh my word, look at that. Look how beautiful she is. Um, she's not as well detailed as the premium version, but you know she is still really well detailed um, I mean the detail on her is just fantastic I mean, just look at the wheels it's absolutely amazing I love the shine on the coupling and connecting rods and the wheels are really nice as well um, the buffers are sprung which is very nice the brake pipe here has been added by me because it comes as an accessory um, so the silver paint on the smoke box which is really nice um, number 4472 which is her number of course um, and there's her name Flying Scotsman on the other side as well it's really nice lovely handrails going on both sides of the boiler and um, very nice dome and a very nice chimney there I mean well you just seriously look at those wheels I mean wow I always love the motion of the coupling and connecting rods, it's just really nice. I mean, wow. As you can see, the, the rear Kartatsi wheel set is, is flangeless because this doesn't turn, so it, they have to be flangeless in, um, in order for her to go around uh, tighter curves. Well, well, train set curves, for example, third, second radius curves. Um, because if they were flanged, then um, well, the train would just keep, de keep, keep derailing. You can replace those with flanged ones, but um, you know, I wouldn't really do that if I had trains that cut. But I wouldn't really do that if uh, you have trains that. But if I were you, I wouldn't do it if you had trains that curves. Um, as you can see, she's a 462 Pacific, so four wheels at the front, which are bogey wheels and. They help her go around corners. Six wheels in the middle, which are the driving wheels, and two wheels at the back, which um, also guide her around corners and supports the back of the engine. Um, you can see I've added the crew members in the cab, and you'll notice there is a bit of cab detail. Uh, you get the firebox door there, and all the um, gauges and uh, other things like that. Uh, basically all the things associated with the cab uh, there are no windows but it's the railroad version 
it's not the premium version so you know they have to keep costs down I got this with the free coaches for a very good price of 75 pounds which I think is just I think it's worth it I mean for such a famous and beautiful engine I mean well I mean wow just look at her the, the paintwork is spot on and I love the white striping 4472 um, you get the boiler washout plugs, safety valves yeah and there's the connections in it I saw I nearly sneezed there but you can see the connection to the tender let's just make those lines as you can see in the uh, pickup current and now speaking of the tender here it, here it is um, it, for it's, it's quite heavy for a tender, it's not very heavy but it's you know it's reasonably heavy um, you can see the, the back the rear wheels turn um, I don't think they did they didn't they I don't think they did in real life but it's to help it go around the corners um, this tender is actually from the uh, old tender drive models um, which and this if you open it up there is still the motor block for the ring field motor so that's why it's quite heavy but again you get sprung buffers and the corridor tender <coughs> um, which obviously the crew used so there were coaches at the back and then the crew used these to swap to bait to swap e with each other during the journey so um, uh, which is in a, the main advantage so basically if the train was running a non-stop from London to Edinburgh and um, they didn't want to obviously stop at the station just to change crew so the crew members would stay some of the crew members would stay on the, the train and when it was time they would swap and they'd go through the tender and it was the main advantage of the uh, the corridor tender you know it was a very good it was a very good invention indeed uh, there's the water filler cap and the coal looks rather nice and LNER London and North Eastern Railway beautiful and that's the hook which connects to the tender as you can see there you go absolutely gorgeous I mean just look at that wow absolutely beautiful now let's see uh, how she performs here we have the flying Scotsman on the track and now let's have a brief look around this gorgeous engine. I mean, look at her. Wow. Her wheels are really nice. And there's her tender. Right. Now, I decided to um, not only run the locomotive with itself, but also I'll bring down her coaches. In fact, I'll do that now. Ta-da! There are her coaches. Now, just a quick review of them. Um, they're not great. They're not the premium Wesley coaches by Horn, but these are the budget railroad uh, coaches. The good thing is they do have metal wheels, whereas the ones which come on their own, I believe, have plastic wheels, which isn't realistic at all. Um, um, and but these coaches are very nice, despite the fact that they're basic and they they lack a lot of detail. They are really nice coaches, and they go very well with flying Scotsman. So let's just put these to one side, and um, we'll just run the flying Scotsman on her own first, and then we'll run over the coaches. So let's go. Wow, I'll just look at that. I mean, look how smoothly she runs. She, there's no stalling. She's just performing really, really nicely. Wow. 
what else can I say? And it's just uh, stop her and put the coaches on. So there we go. And now let's put her coaches on. So here's the brake coach, which of course goes at the end. Here's one of the composite coaches. And here's the second composite coach. Oh. Oh. There we go. Now it's okay, they'll just roll by themselves to couple up with flying six. There we go. Right. There's the whole tray. Isn't that amazing? And now let's begin. Oh my word, look at that, In three coaches is nothing to her, but I'm pretty sure if she pulled more, that would be nothing to her either, wow. Mm. Look how smoothly they go over the point work. Now let's get a few line side shots, shots shall we? bit of a short circuit there but never mind wow it's just amazing oh I see what happens is um, basically let me show you is if she goes too tightly around the corner then the one of these rods makes contact with the rear uh, bo with the rear bogey wheel, and then it causes a short circuit. So um, I must make sure she doesn't go around corners too tightly. Apart from that, she's a very nice performer. Just to conclude this video, if you don't have her, you need her. She's essential. Whether you're a steam fan or a modern day. And Flying Scotsman is an essential locomotive for your layout. And whether it's this, the railroad version or the premium Flying Scotsman, you need her. She's just too important in the sound. Uh, so thanks for watching and see you in the next review.